Well here I have the shutter. It's a uh, Compor Rapid shutter. Speeds T, B and 1 through to a 500th of a second. Um, on this type of shutter you do not cock the shutter to use the T or the B setting. I can see this one's faulty and the B setting the shutter doesn't close, the blades don't close again. The T setting is exactly the same. I set it to a slower speed. Yeah, on a hundredth it works fine. On a tenth it works fine but it sounds exactly the same. So it's certainly not a happy shutter. Uh, ah. Getting the lens off the back could be entertaining. I'll need a friction tool. Friction tools like these are great things to have. They allow you to unscrew stuff that's well stuck without having to get spanners and things onto them. This does not want to move. Let's try the rear group. Oh, that's loose. That came out. Yeah, I can see a bit of paint around the thread there. That was probably on the retaining ring. Some helpful person put that there to lock that. This front one doesn't really want to come off. First I'm going to remove the nameplate there because that sits up slightly proud and I want to make sure that my friction tool is not catching on that. Let's see, that should be good. Oh, well, that doesn't want to move. That is well stuck. Mm. Right. Just remove our little plunger. There's a limit to how much disassembly I can do from here. Let's put this on T. What I'm looking for here is to see if I can see down the side of that front lens group with the view to dropping a little bit of a drop or two of solvent down there. I'll do that. Let's give that a little uh, tricky what to use. Okay. I'll let that sit for a minute and I'll come back and try the friction tool again. Well I tried friction tools, I tried dribbling a little bit of solvent down there, I got nowhere at all and what I was forced to in the end was to use a hose clip and basically I put some tape down on that ring to stop the hose clip from scratching it at all which seems to have done the job. And taking the hose clip, I lay that across there. Of course, these aren't dead flat. This piece is raised, 
but I had this piece over the other side, tape under this edge, which I made sure was over the polished chrome part of this ring, and I was able to free up that lens. There was no danger that I could get that loose using a friction tool. Um, I've got no idea why it was as tight as that. There's nothing obvious on that thread. But I just couldn't get that thing loose. But now it's loose. I've got it off without doing any damage. And I can get into the shutter. I can do without these sorts of hiccups. I'll just rotate this lock screw on the front. And I should be able to... Uh, the bone that's lined up correctly I should be able to pull that front off there that looks like it that's reluctant that's better It was very reluctant to lift off. Alright, let's have a look inside the shutter. Off with the speed settings cam ring. Let's off with the spring from the main lever, as this part's called. Now, what's going on here? The blade actuating ring wants to stick, it doesn't want to return to the rest position, so the, the shutter is very gummy. The blades there's certainly pattern on those blades. Mind you, given I've just sprayed a bit of solvent in there, that could be anything. Yeah, I think it probably is. If I was going to blame somebody for putting their fingerprints there, I think I'm imagining things. Right, dirty old shutter, what do we need to do? I want to remove the screw from that and lift that piece out of the way. That's the piece that the plunger screws into, or a cable release if you were to put a cable release there instead. Unhook that spring and lift this lever out. And I can look, lift out the 500 per second spring. I can lift out the shutter release lever. All of these components are very sticky. This is the latch that holds the shutter in the cocked position. Now these two levers are the B and T setting levers and they shouldn't really be much of a problem with those unless they've been bent. It's not uncommon for things to be bent and things get bent because people pull and push on things that they shouldn't pull and push on or something doesn't work so then they start pulling on levers trying to make it work like they're trying to clear the blockage like they're trying to unclog a sink or something people just do weird stuff all right so here's our mechanism plate and the blades and here's our shutter case and the diaphragm and that is pretty grimy and I can tell you it does not move smoothly. It's not the worst case I've seen by a long shot but it is sticky. So all of that's got to come out and be cleaned. 
so that that moves smoothly. And our mechanism plate here, let's tip those blades off and see if that mechanism, the, that's very sticky. It only just sort of oozes back into the rest position. All this is very dirty and all of it needs to come apart and be cleaned. Three screws hold this retainer in place. Two short ones and a long one probably. This will be the long one. No, we've got three short ones today. It's easy, much easier to find out where to put them when they're all all the same size. Okay. That's as much as I need to strip the mechanism plate. The speed train is absolutely clogged up. That's dried out grease and rubbish doing that. That should pretty much snap back into position. It doesn't. Everything else needs a good clean, it's covered in dried grease. And the diaphragm. Three small screws hold the retainer plate in place. Here we have our moving ring and as that moves that swings those blades inwards or outwards that's all got to come off and be clean. That's quite oily looking but given that I'd given this a little squirt of solvent that oil could have driven in from anywhere. The blades, let's have a look at these, oh look there's rust on this blade. These blades are quite oily, you can see they're sticking together. That oil would cause problems, basically what happens is the oil sticks those blades together. They're pivoted at one end, the moving ring swings them inwards or outwards as you adjust the aperture. If the blades are stuck together, if they're glued together with oil and you force the settings ring, then one of two things can happen. The rivets can be actually torn off the blades or they can uh, just pull out of their respective slots. Or the blades can become distorted so that they no longer lie flat. Well, a blade that no longer lies flat is... Um, it's fine when it's fully assembled, but it's a bugger trying to get it to the assembled state because it's very hard to get the blades correctly positioned in their respective holes in the plates if the blades are curved and wanting to tip out. So oily blades can create a, a problem. Anyway, that's our shutter in little pieces there. Zoom you out a bit. And all of that will have to be cleaned and um, once it's cleaned I'll have to reassemble it and hopefully make a good going shutter out of it. This camera would have been made in 1935 or 1936 so it's got a few years on it. It's a bit older than me. Um, still I think it can be made into a good photo taker. Well I've got my control ring back in place in here. I've cleaned all that, I've cleaned the case, nothing exciting in that, just the usual naphtha and uh, cotton buds to clean away all the old oil and things. You can probably see staining and marks on there. Um, some of that are, is ancient fingerprints. It's hard to say what the rest of the staining is, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to cause a problem. And I've got to clean these blades and of course clean the uh, retainer plate 
The retainer plate's quite oily at the moment. You can probably see the stain of that. So I've got to clean that too. But first of all, I've got to clean these blades. So cleaning diaphragm blades, you have to be quite cautious because it's easy to catch the cotton bud on the rivets on the end that form the pivots. And you don't want to... First of all, you don't want to damage the pivot by tearing it out of the blade, but you don't want to distort the blade by pushing and pulling on it. These blades are not symmetrical, by the way. The little rivet is right near the very corner of the blade at this end. At the other end, it's closer to the centre. It's important that you note the difference because it's... Otherwise, you will end up with an aperture which is not round if you have your blades mixed up. If you have them all the same, all round the same way, but the wrong way, you will, it may well work, but your apertures will not be what you expected them to be. They will be larger or smaller than the value you thought you were going to get. So it's important that they go back in the correct way. Looking at the state of this blade, so I can see some, looking in from the side, I can see the reflected light from the window to my right here. And I can see that there's a, like a fine tracery there. Um, and I, I know from experience that that will be uh, surface corrosion on the blades. It's very fine. And I'm not doing anything about it in this case. I very rarely polish diaphragm blades because it's not necessary um, the, the marking is is only a cosmetic problem not a problem in function but the other reason I don't polish them is that it's too easy to damage the blades while you're polishing them so I just clean them shutter blades by comparison, being generally dead flat with no rivets sticking up to catch cleaning cloths, you can be a little bit more robust with your cleaning and you can I very often polish shutter blades with metal polish if they are heavily marked or if the surface of the blade feels rough to me. You can get an impression of what the surface of the blade is like when you're cleaning them. If your cotton bud moves smoothly across them, then the blade is probably clean and good. If your cotton bud appears to catch on them, or you feel a rough spot, it may indicate a rough spot on the blade, which is typically going to be corrosion. Or it may indicate there's some deposit on the blade, which will be some uh, dried out oil. Oils, when they dry out, can leave a uh, hard lacquer finish behind, as all the volatiles have gone. Here I'm being quite uh, cautious with my tweezers as I hold this blade down to clean it. I don't want to damage the blade or scratch it. So it might look like I'm pressing hard on those blades, so I can assure you I'm not. This diaphragm has 10 blades, I think, and uh, so it takes more effort and more patience to get this reassembled than some uh, cameras where you may only have five blades for your diaphragm. And never 
handle these blades with your fingers. The perspiration will etch into those thin polished surfaces and they will rust. And that actually is particularly a problem if you've just cleaned the blades because you'll have removed the uh, contaminating layer of oil which also acts as a preservative against corrosion sometimes. Yeah, that's that blade with a bit of corrosion on it. You can see the brown marks coming off there. Most of that's cleaning straight off, which is good. And I can tell that because by looking and also by the feel of the cotton bud as it travels over that part of the blade, that's, um, that shouldn't cause me any problem. And that was the only blade that showed any damage of that sort. Right, I've got to assemble the diaphragm. But first of all, I suppose I better clean the retainer plate. The retainer plate holds the pivot points of the 10 diaphragm blades. The retainer plate's dead flat on one side, and the other side has, has five small indentations in it. And those indentations sit over the pivots for the shutter blades. So the side with the indentations faces the shutter blades. The plain side faces the diaphragm blades. This plate, I'm looking at the state of it. It's marked, it's not particularly badly marked the marks are they to say what they are sometimes it's quite clear that they are fingerprints and that means that someone has picked the plate up between finger and thumb and left their fingerprints embossed on it as I say, perspiration will promote corrosion and effectively etch those fingerprints into the surface over time. Yes, that's by no means stunning, but that'll be more than adequate. Right, I'll get my jig and assemble the diaphragm. Okay, assembling the diaphragm. Well, I've got the plate down. I'm on the the plain side of the plate is facing upwards here. The side with the five small indentations is facing downwards. I'm assembling the blades into position. The ends of the blades that I'm placing into the onto the plate here are the rivets that are closer to the centre of the blade not the rivets that are closer to the ed corner or edge of the blade. As I go around, I'm just placing one blade over the top of the next. Until we get round to the start position, where of course the holes in the plate are obscured. So now I've got to move this blade back slightly so I can get the next blade in.
And then the same deal again. Now I've got to pull two blades back out the way. This is a task that you may have to do more than once. Because it's easy to disturb the blades as you're going around and knocking them out of position. So you need to be quite patient. That blade's not sitting correctly. Oh, there's that one. That's better. And this is why I say it's important that the blades not be distorted because it makes them very difficult to get to lock, get them to lie flat. These blades are not exactly lying dead flat. Now I've got to lift these blades back over the top. That looks good. Now I've got to get the, the housing back over the top with my plate in place and of course I've got to line up the pins on these blades with the slots here. So I know I need to be right round to the full aperture position. I know that case goes on there. I'm looking at the arrangement of the slots relative to the screw holes which I'm lining up with the mounting holes here. Give them that a little wriggle to get those pivots to seat into the slots. I'm fairly confident that went well. Flip the jig over. And I've got my three holes that the screws go through to hold the retainer plate in place. I'll get one screw in and I'll do that screw up very lightly. Second screw, the same deal. I can see that one of the pivots has moved out of the hole in the retainer plate here. And put my third screw in position. I'm not going to do this one up very tightly at all. I'm going to try and pull that blade back into position.
Now I can just see one pivot that's out of position. I'm going to try and nudge that blade across. That's it, it just dropped into position. It wasn't far away from position, it was, you know, you could see three quarters of the pivot in the hole. I just had to push it all the way across. Well, all of those pivots are in the position there. And if I move the retaining, the moving plate here with the lever, there was a click sound as one of the blades dropped into its slot. And I'm going to do up those three screws. And there's the diaphragm all back together. It's clean. You can see the marking on those diaphragm blades. That's never going to go away. A lot of that is uh, probably minor surface corrosion marks. Might be other stains. But it doesn't matter. They're not affecting the way that the diaphragm works. It's moving smoothly. No great stress involved, so that's good. Of course, this never opens. doesn't need to open all the way. The maximum aperture of the blade is f3.5. The diaphragm here is able to open much further than that. It would open all the way around to effectively an F2 position for a 50mm lens. That's as far as we ever have it open in this case. Right, well there's our case done. Diaphragm in there. That's all moving smoothly. I can turn my attention to dealing with this mechanism plate next. And the mechanism plate, as I said, is very, very dirty and uh, Lots of dried grease, dust, mostly this is aluminium so corrosion is not so much of a problem. It can be but if you've got corrosion problems with your aluminium then you've usually got serious problems because it means that things must have got very wet and probably with salt water. Excuse me. Right, back to this. You've got to be very careful when you're cleaning around the retard gear train here to make sure that this is in the retracted position, which winds up that little spring in there, that little hairspring, and keeps it out of the way of a, a cotton budge you might be poking in here to clean things. Of course, as soon as you touch this arm, this flops back into position. Now, the retard gear train on this mechanism plate is certainly needs some attention because it's very gummy. Let's see. Yeah, that's very, very slow to return. 